to record this. Okay, so welcome Special Olympics Ontario athletes. I know that we have some athletes not from Ontario, so welcome everyone. So this presentation is going to be about how to be an effective team player. So we are going to talk about, we're gonna have an introduction about me, goals and best practices, effective strategies. We're gonna have a group discussion and then we're gonna finish off with a summary. So the company Special Olympics Ontario. So thank you for joining us today um, for our hangout. So a little bit about me. So my name is Allison and I'm one of the youth employment employees with Special Olympics Ontario. I'm a former Special Olympics Greater Durham Athletics coach. I currently live in Ottawa and I'm a former varsity women's volleyball player. I really enjoy dancing, as some of you may know, and trying new foods. Today, I'm gonna to spend some time and share some strategies about how to be an effective team player. So some goals and best practices. So communication. From communicating goals to what your favorite part of practice was allows athletes to have a voice. Sometimes you may share a common goal or passion with another teammate. Communication is important as it is a foundation to a successful team approach to promote success with team building. Shared experiences. One person's strengths could be another person's areas of need or improvement. Sharing experiences can help promote collaboration within a team. Sharing what works for you during a specific event may be beneficial for someone who is just starting out and needs some feedback. So an example of this would be when I played volleyball, my position was playing right side. And sometimes when you play right side, you have to set, which means that you get the second ball and you are in charge of just running the show. So I would ask my teammate on how to be a better setter, which made me a better player. So with shared experiences, it can also benefit your overall um, quality of performance. And then lastly, lead by example. So by showing up and being a positive team member sets a presence of how you would like to contribute to your team. By being a positive team member, you are allowing others to see what great leadership skills you have, which promote collaboration, respect, and communication within the team. So effective strategies. So respect all learning styles. So as we may know, there are so many different learning styles. So really being open-minded and understanding that people learn differently and accepting that, and just really understanding that we need to look at things from other perspectives. Encourage free thinking and speaking. So if you have a team member who wants to share an experience, we're gonna listen to them. We're gonna show that we are actively engaged and that we, that we care about them. So we're showing them some respect. We're gonna work together to solve problems and, and or conflicts. So if there's a team issue, we're gonna work together as a team to solve that issue, which then promotes teamwork as well as collaboration. As previously stated, we're gonna share our expertise. So one person's strengths may be someone's area of need. So we can work together in that aspect. We're gonna contribute any big ideas or small ideas and be ready and willing to lend a hand. So if you see a teammate, for an example, during track and field, and they are like, oh, you know what? I don't really feel like running today. I'm feeling really tired. What you could do is say, I'll run with you today. And that creates a sense of community and a sense of belonging for the other players. So we're gonna focus on the team goals. So you can celebrate your peer success. So when we're all together, what we can do is celebrate each other, just like we do when we're in our Zoom meetings here. When we finish an activity, we're like, great job, everyone. Everybody looks great. So continuing to do that. Teamwork promotes a sense of community and a sense of belonging. It increases leadership skills, increases self-respect and respect to others. It builds trust and respect, which brings the team together. So now we are going to have some questions. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here. And I'm gonna ask my first question, which is what does being a team player look like for you? So you can write in the chat, or you can raise your hand. Sammy, I see your hand. Yes, um, teamwork, teamwork, like uh, if, if you play soccer, you have the best of the ball. 
Get the price about to be a hawk. Yes, I like that. So making sure everybody is included. Thank you for sharing. Dom, go ahead. Uh, to make sure that everyone is might could be there on time. Ooh, yes. So being accountable. So showing up at practice on time, meeting deadlines. So if there's paperwork involved within your team or special projects. Thank you, Dom. Robert. Welcome. Um, can you come back to me? I'm sorry, I might just think before putting my hand up by accident. No problem. <laughs> Melanie. Accepting to learn to agree to disagree. Yes, that is huge. Do you have an example of that? Yes, I do. Um, obviously everybody is all very happy uh when you win like everybody wants to win but you don't always you're not always gonna win sometimes you win sometimes you lose and if um if a ref or an official uh says a dis uh, says a decision um that is final sometimes you may not agree with it but sometimes you have no choice to that is an amazing example. Thank you so much for sharing that. Julia. Yes, for me, teamwork is about helping each other out and doing your responsibilities and roles. Yes, awesome. Like, I love that you included that. Like for example, like for me, I am on the Athlete Leadership Council for Ontario, and I'm also the Special Olympics Board of Directors as the athlete rep. And my role is to do meetings with the board and the athlete leadership and doing my share of responsibilities and work. Awesome, thank you so much for the examples. Olivia, you're up next. Hi, um, well, um, when I do a special Olympics swimming, I always include my friends too, because, um, um, like I have friends who, um, does as, um, uh, who does special Olympics swimming with me. And, um, like I, when every single time but sometimes I don't win but I have like I have I I have so I I have so many medals and ribbons and um I don't really um do as much as those people like my friends do and but I'm just really want to look forward um to win for for what what I am up against, so I'm just wanted to um, I just wanted to make people and trying to include my friends and and see how, how that goes from there. So just I love Special Olympics and that's what I want to do. So perfect. Thank you so much for sharing, Olivia. Therese, you're up next. Yeah. My, my, the thing about um, team, being a team leader is getting together with the team. You don't win by yourself, you're winning, winning as a team. So you're kind of working together as a team, especially when you're curling on the ice. And if, uh, say, I'm a skip, I would tell my teammates or the person that's coming up next, where I want, would want the stone to go. And then I'm let, telling the, uh, my other two teammates that are sweeping, how hard to sweep and how less to sweep. So it's like a team effort there. Collaboration, I like yeah. it. Perfect, thank you for sharing. Michael.
you're muted. Michael, you're oh. there. You go, buddy. Oh. Okay, here we are. Yes, uh, helping up those who have who have anxiety or, or or sensory overload issues like I do. Of course, my uh, my anxiety and my sensory overload can sometimes can take a direct hit, and and I always try to help out those who have uh, who have sensory overload issues, and especially those who have anxiety issues. Yes, that is a great point. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you, Maria. Mariah, sorry. It's actually Maria, not Mariah. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Where'd you get the, uh, the presentation from? I made it. How'd you make it? I made it on Google Slides. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Did you have anything to add? Okay, no problem. Robert, you're up. Um, I'm with Teresa, uh, no, not Teresa, and a friend, that I like to keep my friends and all my teammates uh, do whatever sports that, excuse me, sports that they play like volleyball, basketball, softball, tennis, bat, but baseball, any sport. Come on, you can do it. Don't give up. Like don't get up. Don't give up quick. Do it and move on. Great. I love the encouragement. That is awesome. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Jesse. Uh, yes, uh, so you did basketball. We can gather to, to your friends and together. And all the time, you can play to pass on the ball, say baseball or golf. You can celebrate for your other friends. You need to a teamwork not together. And you can celebrate because you get a good teamwork with your friends. You do the best when you're, you do it, the best when you get winning with your team. For sure. Could you imagine being on a team where you just play as an individual? Do you think your team would get along? No way. Thank you for sharing, Jesse. Becky and then Mercedes. Okay. Um, I would say cheering on those participants who, you know, see that they are struggling just keep coaching them like in a positive way. Like you got this, keep going. That's, that's what I would say. Yes, awesome. The communication piece, words of encouragement. Okay, California host. Definitely me, I am the Definitely California him. host because I'm the host of the means of California, so. <laughs> that's a great move anyway for um for me um settings i help people um for um for for swimming for golf and bowling so that, that's what i do awesome yes Thanks. Oh, and, sorry, and, go ahead. And, and I'm also a, actually I'm also a coach by the way. I'm a coach of get emotion. So that means it's different now. So that means um when someone needs help, for example, during a sport, then I have to coach them how to do it as a get emotion coach. So perfect. Thank yeah. you for sharing. So question number two is name a strategy you do in order to make others feel included. So some of you touched on that. Is there anything else that anybody would like to add? Mercedes? Oh, 
Okay. Um, well, always demonstrating when you are asked to, to help out with other new people on the team or it's always good to do. Perfect. Leading by example. I like it. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Michael. Uh, mine for, for soccer, keep your head up. You lose in the game. Don't cock back to the referees. Very important. Thank you so much for sharing that, Michael. And Olivia, go ahead. Um, well, for my, um, for, um, what I do for Special Olympics is to, uh, focus on, um, what's, um, like, you need to, uh, focus on, uh, what is, um, you do need to focus on being a, a leader for, for, um, for Special Olympics and, um, is to find ways to not win or lose, but but is also most most importantly thing is that um, um, when um, I'll, I'll say I'll say for example when uh, I'll say I'll say for example when I um, do uh, for example when I say that I'm trying to swim or like when people wants to win uh, they can just tell the, their coach and the coach can tell you um what um uh what uh what people might say when you don't lose or win but um i i i i don't know what to say so what i do know is that um people like you guys should um, find ways to compete in what you want to do and that's what life goes on so perfect thank you so much for the example and explanation Dom go ahead well I would like to say that helping out others makes people happy. It sure does. It brings that sense of community and it brings that sense of belonging for sure. Thank you so much. And in the summers, my, my, my cousin Mercedes always helps me with my flip turns. So she, she, she teaches me how to do a flip turn. That's awesome. I'm glad you have someone to teach you how to do new turns. So my friends, yeah. I still have your hands up. I'm going to get to you, but I'm going to ask you question number three, which is why do you think it is important to be a team player? So Melanie, why do you think it's important to be a team player? Well, to quickly answer the previous question, be understanding and be patient because some people may take a little bit longer to answer or to um, tell you what may be going on and just respect their limits and their boundaries. And for your final question, um, may, I please get you, may I please actually get you to repeat that? Of course I can. So the question is, why do you think it is important to be a team player. Because then um, people will potentially look up to you as an example. And um, if they have um, if they have any questions or, on, or aren't sure about something, at least they have an idea of one person to, to turn to and then 
um, that can mm, eventually turn into like higher networks and more people. Yes, you're right. Thank you so much for the example and explanation and answering two questions. Okay, Stefan, haven't heard from you yet. You're muted. Yeah, uh, the, no, you're good. Being a team player it, it is it, it probably is to give your team like the strength they need to, to win or have fun. And that gives them your team like a chance at winning, how to help the team a chance at winning like, that kind of player that they need that would that could give them a spark to have for a chance to win or something. Perfect. Thank you uh, so much for sharing. Yeah. Jesse, go ahead. Also, Mary has her hand up too. Thank you. Uh, over here. So, CJ basketball, we get athletes for your coaches. So, my team is, is we're going to pass the ball all the times a week. So sitting at golf with your teammates, like focusing on golf, focusing on swimming, and focusing doing my flip turns, and your best thing you, know, you can do your team work the best thing you, you could. And this could be best thing you can. Yeah. You're doing things. So much, yes. Thank you so much for sharing. And what other hands do we have? Mary, go ahead. You're muted. I'm Tia the athlete's on. And if you come in last, don't get upset because it's only for fun and to get exercise. And if someone is leaving the team or um, say get them a gift, get a card or goodbye card. Yes, I love that. Again, that sense of community and sense of belonging. So the next hand I see is Michael C. Oh, uh, for soccer, you lose that game. Keep your head up and try. Uh, try next year win a championship. Yes, perfect. Thank you, Michael G and Robert. Michael G first. Yes. Uh, it's it's uh, of course in most cases if you feel a little bit if you feel a little bit overwhelmed it's it's okay not to feel okay if you're feeling overwhelmed anxious or not quite feeling quite yourself it's it's perfectly okay not to feel okay. A hundred percent, and you can always lean on your teammates and your coaches yes. and your support system to help you through if you're not feeling okay or if you're feeling great yeah. and you want to share that energy with people. So that is very important. Yes. So thank you, Michael, for sharing. Thank you. So my last hand is Robert, and then I'm going to share my screen to finish up. Um, so I'm going to do this. I'm like, uh, the other lady. Um, so my four, the other one that you show where Melanie said, I like to compete. No, I like to help my teammates tell them, oh, you know what? You're yourself. You can take your, like, you can go on a slow pace. You know what I'm saying? And my last one is, I might need to repeat again, like Melanie said. <laughs> So why do you think it is important to be a team player? Oh, um, because then you can say, hey, friends, you can play, like you could. 
<laughs> Sorry. Um, it's okay to play. You just have to say, just take your some, take your time. You don't have to be, or you don't have to say, oh, I have to do this hard. You can say to yourself, you can go nice and slow, like not like, tr- like rush to do it as a teammate. Perfect. Thank you so much for the explanation and examples. And Jonathan, go ahead. You're on mute, Jonathan. Okay, uh, for me, uh, for being team uh, team uh, team player, for me when I play soccer, I have my team and I watch it. I play defense and forward, so I have my team to defend uh, the goalkeeper, and I do good with uh, forward, so I can help my team to win the game. Perfect, I love it. Thank you so much for all of the discussion. And I'm just gonna share my screen one more time just to go over the summary. So creating a community, a safe place for athletes and coaches to share their experiences and learn from one another. Long lasting relationships. So being a part of a community promotes a sense of belonging and allows athletes to form friendships. It is okay to ask questions. So communication is essential with a team setting. You can learn so much from asking questions as long as it opens up more conversations related to sports or the events. And collaboration is key. Teamwork is essential when collaborating in a team setting. So I would like to thank you so much for taking part of How to Be an Effective Team Player Workshop. I'm going to pass the torch on now to my wonderful coworker, Natalia. All right. Um, So if you have a paper and pen or marker or anything like that near you, that is great. If you don't, it's not completely necessary. You can absolutely do this without that. But um, if you do, that's also great. While you guys um, get that, of course, you can watch. I'm going to get my um, screen shared here and we'll start um talking about how to set some goals so is everybody able to see my screen yes we can perfect so we are going to talk about goal setting um so just show of hands how many people set goals pretty often or have at least set them one time. Awesome. Awesome. So goal setting is really, really important when we are trying to accomplish really anything. Um, It's great to have these ideas in the back of our head. And we're going to look at what makes a goal um, great. Like how do we set a really great goal so that it is easier for us to accomplish? Oh, okay. So why is it important to set goals? Because it helps us learn new things, helps us stay focused, holds us accountable, and it gives us something to work towards. So when we have something written down, a goal written down, we're able to stay focused on what we really want to accomplish. So does anybody have a few ideas of when people usually set goals? Maybe you've heard before that um, during a certain time of year, somebody might be setting a goal. If you can think of something, you're welcome to unmute or put it in the chat. And I can't see everyone's hands, so um, go ahead and go ahead and say those out loud if you have an idea. New Year's resolution. Yeah, so awesome. So we have 
New Year's, maybe a new school year, um, maybe a birthday, if you get a new job, if you're starting a new sport. But really, any time you set a new goal, is a, any time is a good time to set a new goal. So there's no specific time you need to set a new goal. You can do it at any point and it can be valuable. Um, so when we're talking about setting goals, there's this acronym we use called SMART goals. And each one of these letters, S-M-A-R-T, stands for something that we can look to in setting goals. Um, has, everyone, has anyone ever heard of SMART goals before? Anybody ever heard that acronym? Okay, so we're going to look at what that means. So the S stands for specific. The M stands for measurable. The A stands for attainable. The R for relevant and the T for time. So these are some things we want to be thinking about when we set our goals. And I'm going to give you some questions we can ask ourselves um, each time that we set a goal. Um, we'll look at some questions that we can ask ourselves. So um, here is what it means when we're talking about being specific. And this is just a little graphic here. So oh, when we want to be specific, we want to answer the question, what do you want to do? So what do you want to do? So for example, if you um, want to improve your um, 100 meter time, I'm not sure, um, if that's maybe something you want to do, then we want to be specific. So what do you want that improvement to be? Do you want to improve it for by one second? Do you want to improve it by five seconds? Whatever that may be, we're going to try and be specific with what we're saying. So rather than just saying, I want to improve my 100 meter time, we're going to say exactly what we want to do. Okay. Our next one. Um, measurable. So how will you know when you've reached your goal? So that's what you want to ask yourself. How will you know when you've reached your goal? And I'm going to give you an example of that in a second. Attainable. Is this goal something you can accomplish? So uh, for example, for this one, I am not very fast at running, but I love to run. So if I say I would like to improve my 100 meter time by one second, then that is absolutely an attainable goal. However, if I say I want to be faster than Usain Bolt, it might not be the most attainable goal for me. So we want to look at, is our goal attainable? When we're talking about realistic, we want to know, is it relevant to your life right now? Right now, I'm trying to be faster at running. So yes, it is relevant to my life. And our last one is time. So when exactly do you want to accomplish it? So something we can do is say, I would like to improve my 100 meter time by one second in the next six months. So now I have a measurable time goal to improve my 100 meter time. So I've given an exact amount of time that I want to accomplish this goal. And the nice thing is, it's okay if you don't accomplish this goal in that amount of time, you can always change that amount of time. But when we give ourselves a time period, then we have more focus to work towards that goal because we remember that we have a specific time that we want to accomplish this. So we um, are going to do a little activity here. You can do this with a paper and a pen, or you can just do this in your head. And that's totally fine. I'll give you about a couple minutes here to do that. So I want you to write down a SMART goal that you want to accomplish in the next month, maybe in the next six months or in the next year. So I'll give you a few minutes to think of those. You can write down three goals. You can write down one goal. It's up to you, but I want you to think of a goal that you want to accomplish in the next month, in the next six months, or in the next year. 
And remember, we're looking to be specific. We want to make it measurable, attainable, realistic, and time period, okay? So I'll give everyone a few minutes and then we will share these goals if you would like to, okay? So I'm gonna write down my goal here. It can be a goal about your sport. It can be a goal just in your daily life. All right. Does anybody have a goal that they might want to share? Um, my coworkers could unmute some people or read some stuff out from the chat. That would be great. Anybody have one? No way. Liam, you have one? Yes, I, yes, awesome. I, have, I have a couple right now. Perfect. Can I hear him? Okay, so first of all, speaking of books, my goals. Um, um, I've been doing this every Monday and Wednesday. Every okay. Monday, um, I do my goals. Amazing. So I, I got a phone call from Marae. She's my get working coach, and then she's talking to me about my goals and stuff. So right. anyway, so every every um once a year, every year I do bowling okay. and swimming. That's for every year. And then I think next six months was something different. Um, so every month, I, I do bowling every month. That's every week. So every week in that month, I do bowling. And then same thing for, um, that's for every month. Um, for next year, every year I do bowling skiing and swimming and golf that's for every year and then every six months it does again so every every year i do the same thing and every, every every next month i do the same thing and every next six months every year um when i start in september that means i do bowling swimming i think i have a winter that would be every year. Plus, awesome. it'll keep going over six months. And then if, if, if I do summer sports, then it's doing the same thing. It's going to be a, every six weeks. It will be every, every, every month. Natalia, thank yeah, you so. so much for sharing, Liam. Uh, I hear somebody saying my name. I just can't see. It's it me, is. Dom. Oh, hi, Dom. How are you? Uh, would you I like have one share? written down? Sure, that'd be great. And after Dom, Melanie will have you share. Uh, to beat the Legend of Zelda Marauder's Mask in one year. That is a great goal. Is that a video game, Dom? Yeah, it's a video game. I just haven't been playing it very often. And I couldn't beat the moon. That is fantastic goal. Thank you, Dom. Thank you, Liam, also for sharing. Uh, Melanie, would you like to share your goal? Yes, please. And I will combine it with the six months to uh, next year or so. Um, I am actually waiting to have surgery to help correct some of my medical conditions that are acting up. But um, I would definitely like to work on uh, being able at some point to do 200 meter butterfly during a race. That is fantastic. Do you swim right now, Melanie? Yes, I do. I swim once a week with the Special Olympics. And I also swim outside of Special Olympics three times a week with the Carleton University Masters. Wow, that is wonderful. So what a great goal to have for the next year. Thank, Thank you. I enjoy swimming a lot. 
That is awesome. Would anybody else like to share? I Can see I go next? Yeah, for sure. Um, so write down one goal you want to accomplish in the next month. So my uh, life coach and I have been working on road safety. So looking before you cross. So that's one I'm going to try and step in the butt for the next month. Uh, write down one goal you want to accomplish in the next six months. Uh, be more good at cooking. And then the next one would be, I think, money. Perfect. Thanks so much for sharing, Becky. Thank you. Uh, Michael, I see your hand. Go ahead. My, uh, my goal is to get a batter in soccer and go to the Nationals. Go to the Nationals. That's a great goal. Thank you, Michael. Um, Mary, do you have your hand up? My goal is to 10 pounds in a month, but good luck with this one. Another one, I want to improve my butterfly. Great. And my other one, working more and riding my bike and swim more. Those are all great goals. Thanks for sharing, Mary. Um, I see Julia's hand. Hey. Hello. So I've been working on a five-year plan. Wow. So, and that is all about living on my own. That is fantastic, Julia. Thank you so much for sharing that. So for the, so for my one-year goal to help me with that plan is I'm taking this program where I get to have a worker with me. And we're going to work on the life skills together. And in the next in, in the next six months for my one year goal to help me with my five year plan is that I will have more confidence in new life skills that I'll be better at. And in one year, I will take those skills that I learned and do them independently. Thank you so much, Julia. Those are awesome, awesome goals. Um, I see Jesse and then Maria. So, City of my goal, as for me, I did my 55 stroke. And this is my goal. And I had my ribbon, my at the cottage, like 50 fly and 50 back. And I'll do anything I stroke. And I really, really get to do my back really faster. Like, oh. you're doing your door, the teeth, and you got your chair on. That is fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Maria, did you have one you wanted to share? No? Okay. Uh, Mercedes? Um, so what I want to accomplish in one month is lose, is, um, lose 10 to 15 pounds at the least, um, and The six months, I would possibly, hopefully, improve my technique in swimming. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. And, oh, sorry. Go ahead. A, and a year join a few more sports and move out awesome all right we are running low on time but i do want everyone to get a chance to share so if somebody wants to share one of their goals um steven would you like to go my goal yeah for uh, sure. my, 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 my goal and one of my goal goals is for the uh <clears throat> for the, like uh, in a year one just try to get my ball Bowling average uh, up a bit more to, awesome. to try to get bowling average up a bit higher than it is right now. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Michael, would you like to go next? 
Yes, uh, my goal is to get back to my uh, weekly overnight. Of course, for some of you may not uh, may not know, I'm actually uh, not only my special Olympics athlete, but my early day on early late Sunday night into early Monday mornings. I'm my I'm a successful host and producer at Carleton University's campus community station 931 one here Carlton CKCUFM. I do the overnight slot for two to seven a.m. early Monday mornings to, with my show Nitrex being mostly LPs and 45s from the years 1970 to 1989 since January 2014, but my show has been on uh, on hiatus for the last two years because of the uh, because of the virus, but I'm aiming to get back in the year trip, possibly by sometime late spring to mid-summer. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll have Robert and then Jonathan. Robert, go ahead. My goal is to play bowling, play baseball, and play some volleyball. Awesome. Thank you so much, Robert. And then Jonathan, go ahead. Okay. My goal is to be Team Canada in the World Cup. That is awesome. Thank you so much. Um, one is soccer and one is basketball. Yes, that is amazing. Thank you for sharing, Jonathan. Okay, so I'm not really sure how these arrows showed up on my screen, uh, but we're going to keep going. So Natalia. Yes. Sorry, there was just one in the chat. Oh, sorry. Um, so Therese had said that she wanted to try to eat less by having one helping on a plate and no late night eating after 11 p.m. Thanks for sharing, Therese. Um, so when we look at the goals we set, we're just always going to ask, are they following our SMART goals? And if not, what can we do to change them? Um, so we are running short on time. So we don't have um, time to do our last activity, but I'm going to explain it to you. So if you would like to do it on your own or watch this back, you can. Um, so a few things about setting goals and how to make sure we follow through with them. Because if you're like me, sometimes I set a lot, a lot of, lot of goals, and then I get a little bit overwhelmed and I don't follow through with all of them. So um, I like to make sure I write my goals down, maybe in a journal, maybe just on a piece of paper. But when, we're, when we write them down, we are more likely to follow through with our goals because we've put them somewhere. Um, check in on them. It can maybe be once a day, once a week, once a month, depending on how big or small your goal is. Check in on them. See if you've um, been working towards it. And then one, do one thing a day to help accomplish the goal. So just one small thing a day helps to help accomplish the goal can let, make the goal feel a little less overwhelming. And also remember that it's totally okay if your timeline changes or even if your goal changes because we change so often. So it is absolutely okay if your goal changes a little bit. Natalia. Yes. Uh, I was just wondering if we could have a me just you and me just just to talk oh at the end we'll have some time for questions with the rest of the staff if you want to stay on okay okay awesome um so if you have a blank piece of paper this is something you can do at any time and this is called a vision board maybe you've done this before so you can take your blank piece of paper and you can draw or write pictures of anything you might want to accomplish in the next year or six months or a month or a week. And if you hang it up somewhere that you see every day, it's a great way to help us remember our goals and work towards our goals. So we don't have time to do this today because we are um, going to have our talent show in about 10 minutes here, but this will be recorded and you can go back and look at it. So you'll end up with a little poster with all your goals on it and then you can look at it every day and it will remind you of some of the things you'd like to accomplish. <laughs> 